so tonight I'm working on some jungle or drum and bass. I've even got my um, jungle hat. I don't have much fancy dress, but this is one of the things that I like. The problem is it doesn't fit on my head very well with the um, with the headset, which is sort of annoying because I'd love to, you know, have that on while I'm navigating the jungle beats. <laughs> plan is we're going to make some banging drum and bass and I promised you last week I was going to show off this new new to me uh, called Galactribe ES1 sampler so this came out I think in 1999 as if I my research is correct you can store a uh, hundred samples on it but each um, track you make can only use 10 samples uh, and there's some restrictions on those. It's also got built-in effects. If you are inventive, you can make a whole track just with this device, which is what I want to do now. The other great thing about the Korg Electribe is it, it's all set up for jamming. It's one of the kind of first wave of, of groove boxes, or maybe early in the second wave. So everything's very hands-on. There's no, not really any menu diving. I mean, there is a little menu here, but it's not deep. So you can really get into it, make some beats and and immediately play live with what you've done. So it's it's a lot of fun. So I've got the Jungle Warfare CD, which um, is getting a lot of use in my uh, productions recently. Picked it up last year. It's one of the classic drum and bass sampling CDs. Got that loaded into my CDJ ready to sample in. So the breakbeat start on track 10. Let's have a listen to what we got. One's called Serious. Kind of want something a bit harder than that. Yeah, that's more what I'm talking about. That kind of hard stepping uh, jungle. So what I'm doing is trying to find the start point with the CDJ. It is there. And I'm going to assign a cue point. The great thing is if you've got a sampler like this or any sampler and you, you can just buy a sample CD and it's like buying a new synth really and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Some people think that there's no real skill in sampling and you're just kind of reusing the work someone else has done but at the end of the day you're still arranging the track so I, I think it's totally fine and particularly if it's like a fun vintage piece like Jungle Warfare right let's um, let's sample it in all right so we need to save that so the first sample is uh, currently being saved into the Electribe Let's uh, set the start and end points of this sample. So we've got to get these, at the moment there's a silent gap at the start of the sample, so we've got to try and remove that. But we need to do it precisely, otherwise the beat won't start in the right place. One way that you can do that it's just by constantly toggling the, the start button. As you can see, only just getting the start, so there's a little way still to go. That's a bit closer. Uh, to get it precise, you can pitch the sample down. Which definitely helps with the precision of it. So we're somewhere around there. You can kind of hear where we start to chop off the start of the sample and it's at that point we know we're in the right place. So 
so somewhere around there, I think. Let's pitch it back up. I'm going to save that and then we'll work on the end point. Now, some people like to set the end point by using the um, reverse feature. Well, I'll get into how you can use the reverse feature. I don't usually use it, but I will show you that technique. So you can see I've gone slightly gone past the end here. You've got the next kick drum coming in, so I'm gonna wind it back a little bit. And a bit more. We're chopping the kick drum off now. I've just got the very slightest click there. So I'm gonna to switch to fine mode. Now this is where you can start to do the reverse technique because you probably don't want to listen to the whole sample just to trim the end, even though that, that's what I do. So what you can do is hit the reverse button and then it will play the sample backwards and you can remove the click at the end like that. But I, I prefer not to um, work that way. Hear it still. That's about perfect. So I'm going to save that. So Dirty1200 asks, what are the tech specs? So it's 16 bit, 4 megabyte sample memory, 32 kilohertz uh, sample rate. You can store 100 samples, but you can only use 10 uh, per pattern. So there's our break beat. I'm going to whack that into the first step and then I need to tune the tempo. Now, according to the Jungle Warfare CD, this break beat is 160 BPM. But according to my CDJ, it's 162 BPM. So I'm going to split the difference and go with 161. And then if it doesn't loop quite right, we can change the tempo. So I, I think 161 was right. I just want to show you what happens if you go too fast. It chops the end of the break beat off then. Like that. And if you go too slow, then you have a gap at the end. Like that. But let's go back to the, the value. Let's try and make it a bit louder, shall we? Um, I can normalize the sample with the... Um, Normalization feature. Let's see if it has made it any louder. It might not have done. Maybe a little bit. So I'm going to chop that break beat up into two sections so that we can kind of resequence it. Well, we don't want to just have. That repeating all over time and time again, as, as nice as it is, it would be good to, to have a bit of variation. So I'm going to ba go back into the sample mode and I'm going to use the truncate function, which will remove the bit at the start that we chopped off and the bit of the end that's chopped off, but it will remove them permanently. And I'm going to make a copy of that onto the second sample. So we've got two identical samples now. So I'm going to stop this first sample a bit before the end, and then probably just before that first snare there. So we're getting close there. Yeah, probably around there. Let's trim the second sample. So this, the end point is 12251. 
So I'll remember that because I want to set the start point of the second one to 12251 as well. Great, that was easy. So I've now got two samples from that one break beat. Let's go back to the sequencer. And I'll put the second sample on the, the one next to it. Let's listen to the pattern, because we should just have the the um the kick. Yeah. And normally I would do more cut-ups of the break. Since we've only got 10 samples, two of that break beat will be enough. Here's a, one of the beautiful things with the Electribe. So I've just saved that pattern. Now it's only one bar long and I can easily change the length of that to two bars. And what it does is it copies the first bar into the second bar automatically. So you don't have to faff around rebuilding the pattern. I'm just going to do two bars. I will extend it to four, but I want to get another break beat in there. This is quite a tech step kind of. It'd be nice to have like a super organic break beat to layer with that. Another thing. Yeah, this one. I'm going to go for that third think break beat as cliched as it is music is about cliches and I do love that break I'm just setting a cue point let's get that into the get that into the sampler couldn't be easier Right, so the think break beat has been sampled. We need to chop it now. Okay, that's a good end point. Let's write that. We will cut up that second break beat, but uh, first let's drop it over the pattern and see how it sounds and make sure it works well. It's in time, but the star isn't quite aligned. Kind of nailed it there. Um, who needs graphical sample editing? Well, actually, maybe I need graphical sample editing because that would have been a lot quicker without with it. But doing it by ear works perfectly well. Let's cut that second break beat up into two sections as well. The timing on the second break beat's not quite there, but it's kind of masked a bit um, when I play the second, when I play the first break beat on top, so that's good. Now, one of the things you can do is change the panning of the sample. So I'm going to pan one break beat to the left and one to the right to give it a big stereo sound. You always want to have two break beat stereo. It makes it much more interesting. That's my pro tip. Well, it's not really a secret tip, I think. Everyone who works with breakbeats knows that you've got to have layer two contrasting breaks together to get that kind of complexity. That's um, sounding quite good, actually. So we'll do a bass now. Basses are on track 53 onwards, so let's skip to that. Have a listen to what we've got. Let's pick a nice bass for this track. a good start. Mm. Mm. 
that's nice. The eight, I kind of like those 808 basses here. That's nice. All right, that one's quite nice. That one's called Substained Bass. Well, let's go for Substained Bass then. Let's set the start point for that bass. Set the end point. You don't really need to set an end point on this because it's you know it's a note, but I will. Before I lay this bass down, what I want to do is extend the pattern again from two bars to four bars. So let's do a bass. We sampled the bass, so I need to there it is. So I do a, a bass note on the start of every bar. Then I'll show you how to do the pitching. So you do it via um, something that they call motion sequencing. So I put motion sequence on trigger hold so that it keeps the same note throughout. All right, we're going to go down two semitones. So 64 is the uh, midpoint, so that will play a C. So I want to go two semitone down on the next step, which will be minus 10. And I'm going to go back up to C, and then on the final bar, I'm going to go three semitones up, which is a 12. Let's um, hear what we've got. Not quite happy with the the notes that I'm playing there. Let's try changing that one. Uh, the bass could be quieter. The bass could be louder. Sorry. Let's have a little recap about the samples we've got. So this thing can use 10 samples in a pattern, 100 samples for the whole machine. So we've got four bits of cut up breakbeat. We've got a bass note. I think what it needs is one more sound. Rave stab would be cool. Let's try a rave stab. Um, there might be some on track uh, 51, according to the track listing. I like that piano. Oh yeah, that's nice. So that's the stab I'm going to do.
that is a bit dry. This is where I can start to mess around and show you the effects. So to put effects on this, all I do is press the effect button. And you can hear it's got some reverb now. We've got a flanger chorus. It's a bit crazy. Phaser. Gives it some nice movement. Let's try the... It's a ring mod. There's a pitch shifter as well. Maybe not the pitch shifter, although it's kind of fun. It's got a compressor, but you probably won't hear on this, but on on beats you can hear, definitely hear it. It's a distortion. Make it kind of sound like an electric guitar. <laughs> Which is not what I want. Um, it's got a big pressure. Quite nice. An isolator, which is kind of like a EQ sort of thing, a resonant filter. Okay, probably not resonant filter. And the last effect is supposed to be wah, but I've changed the firmware on this so that the last effect is actually a delay. So the delay is quite fun, isn't it? But I think I'm going to go with reverb. Windows XP Vaporwave Jungle, yeah. So at the moment, it, it doesn't sound very good with those chord stabs, but I'm going to add some pitch and then it will sound good. Motion sequence, trigger hold. Right, so I think we want to start an octave up. I'm just putting random pitches in at the moment. Right, 63 would be two octaves and we go down to 61. It's quite random, this value and what note you actually get out of it. This is the weakness of this machine, is knowing the this value and what note it corresponds to. Let's listen to what I've done. <laughs> Quite nice. pleased with how it's going. Well, it could be quite nice to have like a stupid um, vocal snippet of, of some sort. Mm, I'm not Come on! It's very jungle. Plenty of fun on these samples as well. Must have heard that tracks that one. It's cool though. That's quite fun, isn't it? Edit the start point. 
And the endpoint, and I'll do the reverse trick. Brilliant. Let's load it into the track. So we've got... There we go, there's an empty slot there. Put the new side in there. Filter it a bit and we can add the delay effect too. That sounds very good. This thing is way better than a Volker sample. You can sample into it. It's got loads of effects. You can save them onto smart media. You can actually jam with it. You can make proper songs with it. When it came out, this was three times the price of what a Volker sold for at the beginning. So you are paying, you, you'll get more, but you pay more. Do you see what I mean? I'm going to wrap up this stream now. Thanks everyone for joining me on my trip deep into the jungle. Shout out to everyone who's joined. This has been a really good stream and it's always because of the people in the chat. That's what makes it a good stream.